hello everyone today we are going to start with a new module that is design of floor system so in this we are going to see a floor system in which we have slabs and beam so basically we are going to design the slab and the beam so in TRCS we have already done this we know how to design a slab a one-way slab and a two-way slab and we also know how to design a beam so the only difference is in this module we are going to design the slab and the beam together in one problem so I hope that is clear so the prerequisites for this you already know we have done in TRCS so let us start with the problem let us go through the question for the plan shown in the figure the slabs are subjected to a live load of 3 kN per meter square floor finish is 1 kN per meter square external beams carry 230 mm thick brick wall of height 3.2 meters while the internal beams carry 115 mm thick brick wall of height 3.2 meters design the slab S1 S1 you can see here so you I'll just point out with the help of the pointer if you can see on the screen so this slab S1 and S1 we have to design the beams B2 and B3 so this is B2 and this is B3 and the beam B4 so on, on the extreme left you can see this is beam B4 so we have to design the slab S1 S1 okay and uh, beam B2 B3 and B4 so the data which is given to us is the floor plan is given the dimensions are given to us the, of the slab the loading is given to us so live load is 3 floor finish is 1 and the wall thickness is 230 for external and it is 115 mm for internal and the height of the wall is 3.2 meters so I hope the data is clear to you so let us start with the solution and the grade of concrete is M20 and steel is Fe415 so this is the plan which is already given to you in the question the dimensions are so I have written here for slab S1 the dimension is 3 by 3.5 okay so LX is the shortest span so which is 3 meters and LY is the longest span so that is 3 point, uh, for S1 it is 3.5 meters so first we'll find out the short span and the long span coefficient for the slab so in two way design so in TRCS we had done a, uh, an isolated two-way slab okay so only a single slab but here it is a continuous two-way slab so for a continuous two-way slab we have a table in the IS code from which we can get the coefficients to design the two-way slab so I have mentioned the reference of the IS code wherever I have used so you can go through the IS code from that reference so the first step is first step is to find out the bending moment coefficients so we have slab s1 and s2 so for s1 ly by lx is ly is 3.5 and lx is 3 so it comes out to be 1.167 and similarly for s2 your ly is 4 and lx is 3.5 so ly by lx is 1.14 so now to understand uh, this case and the short span and the long span coefficient so I've just included this IS uh, table number 26 from IS 456 2000 so this is given in page 91 so let us just refer this table to understand the short span and the long span coefficients so how to take these coefficients so first you have to find out the ratio ly by lx and then case how to decide the case so if you see the plan so total there are in this total there are nine cases so first is the interior panel so interior panel is nothing but the slab uh, which is having continuity from all the sides so basically an interior slab is nothing but your interior panel so now if we see here s1 and s2 so if you consider s1 so you have continuity for s1 okay so just pay attention here on my pointer so you have continuity for s1 but if you see this slab s1 so it is discontinuous from two adjacent edges this and this similarly s1 is discontinuous from two adjacent edges so we have different cases here so one short edge is continuous one long edge is discontinuous two adjacent edges discontinuous two short edges discontinuous two long edges discontinuous three edges discontinuous three edges discontinuous okay one long edge continuous one short edge continuous and four edges discontinuous so these cases 
I have already taken in the lecture in TRCS. So I'm still explaining you in brief here how to understand the case. So the case which we are dealing with. So in this you can see these are the two adjacent sides for S1 and they are discontinuous only this side. Okay, this side is continuous with S2 slab. I hope you understood this. So our case becomes four. Okay, two adjacent edges discontinuous. So that is how this case four has come. Now alpha x the short span coefficient here, here you can see short span coefficient alpha x and long span coefficient alpha y. So alpha x is again divided or it is based on the values of ly by lx. So ly by lx also we have. So ly by lx for s1 is 1.167. So here we will see the ratio 1.1 and we have 1.2. So it is bit it is in between 1.1 and 1.2. So hence we have to interpolate. We will have to interpolate at 1.167 to get these coefficients. So we have two coefficients: negative moment at the continuous edge and positive moment at the mid span. Okay. So here I've just underlined uh, below 1.2 and 1.1. Can you see my pointer 1.1 and 1.2? So if you interpolate between 0 0.053 and 0 0.06, you will get for 1.167 as 0 0.057. And similarly for alpha x is nothing but your positive bending moment at the mid span. So 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.04 it is for 1.1. So for 1.16 it will be definitely more than that. So it is 0 0.043. So you this you can calculate by just interpolating the values. This is 0 0.04. Now coming to long span coefficient alpha y. So alpha y is same for all the ratios. Okay. So this value remains the same. So alpha y for case 4 is 0 0.047 negative bending moment. So minus I have written 0 0.047 is negative bending moment. And for positive it is 0 0.035. Here you can see my pointer 0 0.035. So for positive that is alpha y is 0 0.035. So similarly find out for S2. S2 is again uh, it is in case for two adjacent edges discontinuous and this for alpha x it is 0 0.055. S since it is 1.14 slightly less than this. So it is again if you interpolate it become it comes out to be 0 0.055 and alpha positive at the mid span it is 0 0.042. So I hope this table is very much clear to you. It is in IS page 91 table 26. So now we got the coefficients. So I've just written the coefficients here. Okay. So you can just go through it. So now the first step is to design of the slab. So first we will find out the depth of the slab. So the depth of the slab we will find out by the deflection criteria. That is your span by depth ratio. So from that we get the depth formula as L effective upon 26 MFT. So this you can find it in page 37 clause 23.2.1. For continuous slab, this L effective upon it is 26 MFT. For simply supported it is 20 MFT and for cantilever slab it is 7 MFT. So L effective uh, is the shorter span which we are taking LX. Uh, so we design, we always design for the shorter span. So you'll have to take the shorter span lx by 26 into mft so let us assume the value of mft as 1.3 so this we have already done in trcs so this we are uh, assuming it on a on a higher side so that our design becomes safe so for fe415 so the percentage of steel should be between 0 0.25 and 0 0.45 so on the basis of that we have selected mft so if you see mft for 1.3 value uh, the percentage will be 0 0.4 percentage I hope that is clear now. So the effective depth we get as 88.75 mm. So now let us consider a suitable effective cover of 25 mm. So therefore the overall depth will be 88.75 plus 25 it is 113.75 mm. So therefore provide overall depth as 125 mm and effective depth as 100 mm. So 125 minus 25 is nothing but 100. So the first step we got the depth of the slab. So the next step is to calculate the loads. So first we'll find out the self weight of the slab. Self weight of the slab is given by uh, your depth into density. So depth is 125 mm into density it is 3.125 kilonewton per meter square. So we are we are designing the slab for per meter width. So if you multiply that by one, so you will get it as in kilonewton per meter. Similarly, live load is given as 
3 kN per meter square in the question, floor finish is 1. So therefore total load is 7.125. So for per meter width, if you multiply by 1, it will be 7.125 kN per meter. And factored load means if you multiply this with 1.5, you, uh, you will get the value as 10.6875. This is the factored load, WU. So we got the loads on the slab. Now the uh, second step, the third step is to find out the bending moment and shear force. So how to find out the bending moment and shear force? So remember one thing, there's a note. While, calculate the neg uh, while calculating the negative bending moments at the supports, the greater of the two coefficients at that point should be considered. Okay, so this is applicable only to the negative uh, bending moment coefficients. So whenever the negative bending uh, at the junction, you will find two bending moment coefficients, okay? So in that case, you will consider the higher bending moment. So here we can see for the negative minus alpha x, this will remain the same, right, for both. Only this is the issue. So minus alpha x, it is 0 0.057. So that is the higher one. So obviously we are designing the slab S1. So we will take minus alpha x as 0 0.057. So in case this value is more than uh, S1, so you will take the higher value. But in our case, the value of S1 is higher. So we will take 0 0.057 only. So now short span bending moments minus mx is so this is given in again in your is code i'll just show see can you see my pointer so the bending moments is given by alpha x into w into lx square so that's what we are using alpha x into w into lx square so alpha x is for negative bending moment 0 0.057 into wu total 10.6 into l effective is 3. so similarly positive bending moment we'll find out alpha x into w positive bending moment coefficient is just check let us check positive bending moment coefficient is 0 0.043 okay for s1 we are designing s1 okay so 0 0.043 into again w into lx square will give you 4.136 kN meter so now let us find out the bending moment in the long span so long span bending moment again there will be negative and positive so it is uh, for long span the values are same that is 0 0.047 and 0 0.035 so 0 0.047 for negative coefficient again the same formula w into lx square so you get the values 4.52 and 3.36 so basically now we got bending moments at four points that is for the short span and for the long span again for short span we got <laughs> positive and negative and long span again for positive and negative now let us find out the shear force so for two-way slab remember the maximum shear force is given by the formula w into l effective lx effective by 3 okay so this is the formula to find out the shear force in case of two-way slab so w you have the value lx effective is 3 upon 3 that will give you 10.6875 kN okay so this is the formula for two-way slab so we got the bending moment and shear force so now we can actually design the section so first we will check the depth of the slab that is nothing but check for flexion so check for flexion you know the formula so mr of a singly reinforced balance section is given by 0.138 fck bd square okay so that is used here and we have just checked the depth so 0.13 fck bd square so you find out d it comes out to be 44.51 which is less than the actual d provided that is 100 mm so hence it is safe so now let us go to the next step to find out the reinforcement so calculation of main reinforcement so now we will do it in a tabular form so that it becomes convenient for us to solve the problem so first we'll make a, a table of the description then short span moment and long span again short span is divided into moment uh, at the support and at the mid span so we will find out the reinforcement at the support and at the mid span separately again for long span we'll find out the reinforcement at the support and at the mid span so i hope this is clear so now first thing is we will find out the moments at these locations so we will just uh, write the moments so mu into in kilonewton meter at the support for the short span so what is the value at the support for the short span it is 5.48 so that's what i've written and for the long span it is 4.136 you can see my pointer 4.136 long span at the support that is negative it is 4.52 this is 4.52 and positive that is at the mid span it is 3.36 this is 3.36 i hope the bending moment is clear 
Now the second step is to find out the AST required. So how will you find out AST required? The same old formula which we use 0.5 FCK BD upon FY into 1 minus under root 1 minus 4.6 MU upon FCK BD square. So I have just written in short form so I know you know the formula. So you can find out the AST required for this moment. You just have to change the moment so you will get the value of the area. So at the supports we are getting as 156 at the mid span it is 117 and for the long span at the support it is 142 and at the mid span it is 104 so now let us find out the AST minimum so AST minimum is given by 0.12 percentage BD for FE415 steel okay so we'll, whatever uh, area we will find out we have to check with the minimum steel so the minimum steel comes out to be 150 for all the uh, supports and the mid span okay so we have uh, found out the AST minimum that is coming out to be 150 mm square so now remember this I have shown here so let us consider a clear cover of uh, 20 and main bar as 10 mm so since uh, this is a two-way slab so you have steel in both the directions and both is nothing but your main steel so your effective depth will be DX and DY so there will be two effective depths in this case and we will see the significance of this in the uh, steps ahead so I'll so DX I have just found out so this is the cross section so this is the main bar that is of 10 mm and this is uh, along the longer side I have selected diameter of 8 mm so now you can see DX is nothing but from the top fiber to the center of the main bar so it is 125 minus 20 is the clear cover minus 10 by 2 so DX is nothing but 100 mm Similarly, if you find out dy, dy is 125 minus 20 is the clear cover, 10 is the diameter of the in the small in the short direction, and 8 is the diameter in the long direction. So that is 8 by 2. So that comes out to be 91. So you have your dx value as 100 and dy value as 91. I hope this is clear with the figure. So we got AST minimum. Now spacing required is area of one bar upon total AST into thousand. So area of one bar, so let us assume 10 mm bar for short span and 8 mm bar for long span. So here you can see I have used 8 mm for long span and 10 mm uh, for short span. So uh, spacing required, you know the formula, AST of uh, area of one bar upon AST required, that is 156 into 1000. So you will get 10 tor at 500. Okay. So for the mid span, it is 10 tor at 523. And if you find out for the long span, by taking 8 mm diameter so it is 8 toret 335 and this is 8 toret 335 so you know the spacing criteria that is 3d or 300 whichever is less so i have just shown here 300 300 and uh, 3d it comes out to be 273 okay so whichever is less that you have to consider so therefore uh, reinforcement provided the next step is reinforcement provided so you will provide the reinforcement at a spacing it should not be more than 300 so we have to take the minimum spacing of 300 so therefore 10 tor at 300 mm center to center I have taken similarly here 10 tor at 300 I have taken and here I have taken as 8 tor at 250 okay so it is coming out to be 273 so let us uh, approximate it to 250 so let us provide 8 tor at 250 and 8 tor at 250 in the long span so therefore AST provided you know how to find out AST provided so just uh, use the spacing so AST provided is area of one bar upon the spacing which you have provided into 1000 so I hope you know the formula so it comes out to be 261.8 261 and this uh, AST of uh, area of one bar upon spacing is 250 into 1000 will give you 201.06 so now you can find out the percentage AST upon BD into 100 so find out the percentage of steel you have provided so it is 0 0.26 0 0.26 0 0.22 and 0 0.22 so this by this we have found out the reinforcement and we have also done the check for flexure so what is remaining now check for shear is remaining and then we will find out the edge reinforcement and the torsional reinforcement and check for deflection so that we will see in the next lecture thank you